the ancient world was full of temples. From Greece, to Rome, to Egypt, to Babylon, temples weren't just made for humans to worship. They were the place where heaven and earth collided and where a god could live. In fact, when ancient people told stories about the creation of the world, those stories often ended with the god building a temple and making it their home. The first pages of the Bible tell one such story. According to Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. On the seventh day, God finished his work and he rested. This story is more than just a simple account of the world's beginning. It is the story of God building himself a temple to live in. But this raises an important question. Where is the temple in Genesis? In other ancient accounts, the creation of the world comes before the founding of the God's temple. But in the Genesis account, the creation of the world is the creation of the temple. In other words, God's temple is all of creation. Consider this. In the ancient world, the number seven was strongly associated with temples. So, when we read that creation took seven days, we should realize that more than time is passing, a temple is being established. And on the seventh most important day, the story's climax, God chooses to rest. The ancients knew something we typically don't. God's only rest in temples. In fact, this is exactly what temples were made for, to be a place for a God to rest. Therefore, if God rests in creation, then creation must be a temple. But God resting in creation does not mean that he is equally present everywhere. No, he reveals himself through a particular representative, his image. In ancient temples, the last object set up was the image of the god, an idol that showed off the god's identity and character. This statue acted as the gateway between heaven and earth. It released the god's power into the world while sending the world's worship and praise back to the god. In the same way, the last object set up in the Genesis temple is God's image, humans. God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Humans reveal God's identity and character to the world while reflecting the wonder and praise of the world back to God. So just like images stood for gods in temples, humans are meant to stand for God on the earth. If this is true, if God made this world to be his temple and humans the image within that temple, this story is revolutionary for the meaning of life in the universe, for it unveils three critical realities. First, God intends to fill this world with his presence, because a God who builds a temple is a God who intends to live in that temple. This means that God is not some distant deity indifferent to human affairs, but is up close and personal deeply invested in the events of this earth. Even so, the Bible tells a remarkable, tragic story. Humans have again and again driven God away from his temple. Yet the Bible also tells an even more remarkable story. Despite human rejection, God has not rejected his temple. He has not let go of his intent to dwell on earth with humans. This then reveals a second reality. Humans enjoy full and abundant life only when they embrace their vocation to be God's image. Consider a temple image. It had no power or meaning in itself. It couldn't just break off from the God. On its own, it was just a statue. The same is true for humans. God created humans to be his image in his temple. But when they reject this calling and cut him off, like a branch cut off from its trunk, they lose their source of life and meaning. Only when they are connected to the trunk, living as God's image, can they truly flourish and prosper. We arrive then at the remarkable conclusion of Genesis 1. A restored partnership between God and humans brings not only human flourishing, but the very presence of God back to the creation where it was always meant to be. When humans choose to reflect God's image, when they radiate his love, goodness, and beauty into his temple, God's presence fills the earth while humans satisfy their mission. Then the world can become what it was always made for, a place where heaven and earth can wonderfully interlock, 
bursting with human abundance, full of the presence of God.